Nick Scripp from Fantrax. Here are my fantasy football starts of the week for week five. For the quarterback position, Jordan Love plays the Raiders on Monday Night Football, who allow the ninth most fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. In week three, Kenny Pickett threw 235 and two touchdowns against the Raiders. In week two, Josh Allen, 274 and three touchdowns against the Raiders. Jordan Love has been a top 12 quarterback for fantasy football in three out of four of his games played this season. He opened up the year the first two weeks with six total passing touchdowns. He's rushed for two touchdowns the last two weeks. And now we should have Christian Watson and Aaron Jones not on a snap count heading into week five. David Montgomery faces the Panthers, who allow the fourth most fantasy points per game to running backs and the sixth most rushing yards per game. Alexander Madison rushed for 95 yards last week. Kenneth Walker the third for 97 and two scores in week three. Tony Jones Jr. scored twice in week two. And Tyler Algier also scored twice in week one against the Panthers. We are noting touchdowns, and then we are noting a guy that has scored plenty of touchdowns this season. He has had five through his three games played. The rookie Jameer Gibbs isn't really cutting into work. Montgomery has totaled 21, 17, and 34 touches in his three games played. He's coming off of a red-hot 121 rushing yard and three touchdown day as the fantasy football running back two just last week. Joe Mixon faces the Cardinals, who allow the third most fantasy points per game to running backs this season, along with the ninth most rushing yards per game. Christian McCaffrey went off on the Cardinals last week, rushing for 106 yards and three touchdowns. He caught seven balls for 71 yards and another score. Tony Pollard against the Cardinals, 122 rushing yards in week three. And Saquon Barkley scored a rushing and receiving touchdown against the Cardinals in week two. Joe Mixon has yet to have a good fantasy week, but the Bengals have been bad. Joe Burrow's been struggling. We might not have T. Higgins. I think this is the week Joe Mixon goes off for fantasy. Brees Hall has a revenge game narrative facing the Broncos because last season, this is the week that he tore his ACL. He rushed the ball four times in that Week 7 matchup last year, scored a touchdown, had 72 rushing yards, and unfortunately his season was ended. Jets head coach Robert Sala was quoted saying that Brees Hall no longer has a pitch count. Which is encouraging because he hasn't touched the ball to the degree that we want, but we did see what he can do week one when he rushed for 127 yards. The Broncos allow the most fantasy points per game to running backs this season. Khalil Herbert rushed for 103 last week against Denver. Devon Chain went off for 203 rushing yards and two touchdowns along with two receiving touchdowns against the Broncos while Raheem Mostert in the same game rushed for 82 yards, three rushing and one receiving touchdown. Brian Robinson as well, rushed for 87 yards and two scores in week two against the Broncos. So it's a great matchup. We got the revenge game narrative and also Brees Hall could be touching the ball more. DeAndre Hopkins faces the Colts who allow the ninth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers along with the fifth most passing yards per game. Puka Nakua caught nine passes for 163 yards and a score last week. Nico Collins caught seven passes for 146 yards and a touchdown in week two. Calvin Ridley caught eight passes for 101 yards and a touchdown in week one, all against the Colts. DeAndre Hopkins opened up the season being heavily utilized, right? We saw 13 targets in week one. The next few weeks, he saw, you know, seven and six targets while only scoring 10.3 fantasy points to follow. The Colts present a great matchup for DeAndre Hopkins to get right. I mean, this guy averaged 16.9 fantasy points per game just last season. And in that same game, I like Michael Pittman Jr. against the Titans, who allow the 8th most fantasy points per game to wide receivers this season and the 10th most passing yards per game. Jamar Chase finished with 73 receiving yards last week. Amari Cooper caught 7 passes for 116 yards and a touchdown in Week 3. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams back in week two combined for 194 receiving yards and two touchdowns. And in week one, Chris Olave finished with eight catches for 112 receiving yards, all against the Titans. It was a down week four for Michael Pittman Jr., but prior to that, he scored 23.7, 13.6, and 16.7 fantasy points. And his targets the opening three weeks were great, 11, 12, and 11. The connection with Anthony Richardson is there. These guys were wearing matching t-shirts last week. So big day to come for Michael Pittman Jr.
Zay Flowers faces the Steelers, who allow the third most fantasy points per game to wide receivers and the seventh most passing yards per game this season. Nico Collins caught seven passes for 168 yards and two touchdowns last week. Devonta Adams, 13 passes for 172 yards and two touchdowns in week three. Amari Cooper caught seven passes for 90 yards in week two. And Brandon Ayuk caught eight passes for 129 yards and two touchdowns in week one, all against the Steelers. Despite a season-low four targets last week, Zay Flowers still leads the Ravens with 29 targets this season. Flowers was targeted 10 times in both week one and week three, where he finished with 17.7 and 13 fantasy points. Other positive signs include 78 receiving yards in week one. He had 18.67 yards per catch just last week. He's also rushed the ball at least one time in every game this season. So seeing the wide receiver success against the Steelers this season and his usage so far his rookie year, I like Zay Flowers this week. Another rookie to mention, Dalton Kincaid faces the Jaguars, who allow the second most fantasy points per game to tight ends this season and the 11th most passing yards per game. Jonu Smith finished with six receptions and 95 receiving yards last week. Brevin Jordan scored a touchdown in week three, and Travis Kelsey scored in week two all against the Jaguars. Dalton Kincaid, through three weeks of football, earned 12 targets, which was equal to his teammate Dawson Knox. But in week four, we might have seen some signs of separation from this like tight end committee because Dalton Kincaid earned five targets to Dawson Knox's one. If the usage is there, I think Dalton Kincaid could have a breakout week in week five. Then Zach Ertz faces the Bengals, who allow the six most fantasy points per game to tight ends this season. Tyler Higby caught five passes for 71 yards, and Mark Andrews caught five passes for 41 yards and a touchdown both against the Bengals this season. Three of Zach Ertz's four games, he has earned 10, 8, and 10 targets. And in two of those games, he finished with over 50 receiving yards. Ertz has already finished as a top 12 tight end in three weeks. This is a great matchup. He's being highly utilized. His quarterback looks good. Zach Ertz, week five. Be sure you are following the Fantrax socials for consistent fantasy football content to help you guys win.